Good morning, Oracle's Oracle. Tim here. Well, the market was red yesterday, but Tesla was green, so we're thrown on the green shirt today. So that was a great sign to see that Tesla was up 1% yesterday, but we got our CPI data in and the data was still high. So we did meet expectations. Core inflation was lower than expected. That was a great sign, but we have to remember that inflation is still very high. So we have a long road to go, but this could be leading the Fed to do a 25 basis point hike rather than a 50 basis point hike, which is good for the market. And a good sign with the stock movement today is we got up to 1021 and then we fell back down over the course of the day. And then we did have a little rally into close. So that was nice to see. And we will see if this continues. So I don't know if we're going to get as much of a sell-off as I anticipated because inflation wasn't higher than expected. But again, the market is being highly manipulated right now, and Tesla is one of the most manipulated stocks that are out there. It does work in our favor in a lot of cases, but sometimes it does not. So long term, the stock is still going to do well, regardless of how much the market manipulates the stock price now. Long term, looking at fundamentals, it is still going to be a great thing. And so when I look at the market and fundamentals, there's one of the things I pay attention to. And we talk about Tesla's fundamentals all the time on here, which is regardless of what the stock price is reflecting, look at the fundamentals of the company. And the fundamentals of the company continue to get better and better. Yes, we have short-term issues going on with Shanghai right now, but it is a short-term one-time issue that is going to alleviate and go away and will be fine long term. So I look at the market the same way and say, well, yes, we beat expectations, but expectations were high, which is not good. And the fundamentals of the macro environment right now are still not very good. So we are now battling good fundamentals for Tesla and bad fundamentals in the macro environment. And we're going to have that battle raging, which is why it's so easy to manipulate the market right now because you've got such a dichotomy going on between Tesla's awesome growth and future and such negative uh, sentiment going on in the macro environment. And so I did add a little bit more Tesla yesterday. I added a little bit more about 993 on the day. And I'm just going to keep paying attention because if we do sell off more, I'm going to just continue to add more on a daily basis. I add more every single day anyway, but I want to be adding a little bit extra just because, you know, if we are going to continue coming down, I want to add more. My goal is to get myself to 10 shares before we get to our split. And now one thing I noticed from a customer standpoint is I had made some adjustments with my order on my Model Y. So I had added FSD, which took my lead time from November all the way to March. Now, I was not ready to take my delivery yet. I have to buy a house first, so that is my first financial priority. But I kicked a can down the road, so I delayed it. The delay went until last week. I was then in limbo, and so being in limbo, that didn't give me a, a date. It just gave me a TBD to be determined. Today was the first time I had seen an updated time frame. Now, when you change your order, it doesn't change the price. For me, it did not change the price but it did change the date that I placed the order and it changed it to when I last made the last addition. And so I changed uh, FSD and I took it out. So it changed my date to when I did that. My current delivery date is now January, 2023 to April, 2023. So I've got that window now. So it kicked me down even further than November. Now, part of the reason that may be is because I still need to uh, add in the trade-in that I'm going to have for my vehicle. I have not confirmed that yet, and I need to go in and do financing and get uh, pre-approved for that again. So I had done that previously, that expired, so I need to go and get approved for the financing again. So this tells me that Tesla is taking vehicles and prioritizing the vehicles for people and consumers that are ready to take delivery now. If you've got everything filled out and all of your information is good to go and you're able to pull the trigger right now if they were available, those are the cars that Tesla is prioritizing. So that tells me that demand is really extremely high. We knew this, but now I've seen it firsthand because they're not even going to give you the time of day basically unless they say, unless you say, hey, I've got all my information, I am ready to go. Sort of like buying a house right now. 
anybody who follows the housing market knows that the customers who are pre-approved and forego appraisals and forego inspections and just say, I'm ready to buy, I'm good to go, here's my information, those are the people who are getting their houses first. That's basically what's going on with Tesla. That is superior pricing power going on right now. And the reason pricing power is so important is when you're starting to look at potential recession coming up. Now the Fed wants to do a soft landing and the CPI data we got yesterday tells us that we are kind of going in that right direction. We took the first step we needed to get ourselves to a soft landing. We still have a long way to go before we get there, but just in case we do end up getting ourselves to a recession, Tesla has the pricing power. The companies that have pricing power like that are the ones who can weather recessions much better than everyone else. And the reason that pricing power is so important is because a lot of times, depending on the recession you get, people you know who make a certain income, maybe over $150,000 a year, they're basically recession proof. You know, they still don't get affected that much by the prices, you know, and, and recession happening, they can get through it more easily. Those are also the same people who are the ones who are more uh, apt to be buying a Tesla. Now, what the pricing power is great for is the fact that, you know, if they do see demand happen to wane because of a recession, they have the flexibility of bringing prices down to be able to bring demand back up. Companies that do not have that pricing power don't have that flexibility because if they bring prices down too far in order to bring demand up, they start to go into the negative and don't make the profits that they need to make to keep the company moving forward. Tesla, as we know by their financials, they're making money hand over fist. They have tons of money coming in through profits, so they can easily cut some of those profits out if need be to make sure that demand stays high. And so for those of you who have been questioning how is Tesla going to handle a recession, so there it is. As a company, they will be able to do fine going through the recession because of their pricing power. When it comes to the stock price, yes, I mean, the entire market would take a hit because of a recession. So the stock price would most likely come down. But that would still be another great buying opportunity during that time because what happens with the companies who have the best pricing power during a recession are the ones who come out the strongest on the other side. Look back to Apple and Amazon when we were coming out of the recession in 2008 and 2009. Those two, along with Google and some other key players, did the best. I mean, look at all the FANG stocks. Basically, all the FANG stocks are who they are because they had the pricing power going through that recession. Tesla is going to be one of those companies. So I think Tesla right now is in a win-win situation. If we get a recession, I think they're going to come out probably even better than if we don't get one. The reason I say that is because if we get a recession, the companies who cannot weather that storm are going to fall to the wayside and Tesla is going to be able to pick up those pieces. If we don't get a recession, everybody is going to do well and Tesla will still continue to do better than everyone else. So in my view, based on the fundamentals that we know and the financials that Tesla has, they are going to win regardless of whether we get a recession or not. And getting a recession or not is going to dictate how far the price of the stock is going to come down. That's really it, you know, when we're still going to monitor fundamentals all along the way. So as long as Tesla's fundamentals stay on the path that they are going, as long as there's no other major issues that happen during that recession to Tesla, they're going to come out on the top and the stock will take off even more afterwards. And no, no, this does not mean I am rooting for a recession. I think a recession would be terrible across the board. So many other problems that come along with a recession. So I do not want one at all. I'm just stating my take on what I think Tesla would do in reaction to a recession. But again, I do not want one. I would prefer we don't get one. It would be better for the economy, better for all of us as citizens of the country. So let's just not get one. We are rooting for the Fed to do a soft landing. And so just taking a quick dive into the charts before we close up here, 
Uh, we are still in a downward channel. We have been trading in a downward channel for the last week or so, and we are still going down that direction. Despite the fact that we were green on the day yesterday, we are still in that downward channel. So I'm paying attention to that. We'll see how we react on the PPI data that comes out today. We'll react when it comes out with JP Morgan's information during their earnings call about potential recession issues. So still paying attention to that. The RSI is just under 50, which is right in the middle, which means that we can move either direction. Last time I noticed we were in this position was right around earnings last time uh, in January. And we were right in the middle, saw a little bump up, and then we came way down and ended up getting ourselves to an oversold point under 30. So right now, we're right in the middle and can go either direction. Don't know which way we're going to go, so I'm going to be ready for either, either way. Volume we saw yesterday was around 21 million shares traded, and so that is still on the lower end of the volume spectrum. So... That tells me that, you know, there's still a lot of uncertainty out there and a lot of people just kind of waiting for more information to see what's going on before they pull the trigger to make sure they're going to buy or sell in either direction. And I think with the way the rest of this week ends up trading will give us a good indication as to how we're going to trade through the rest of the month. If we end up this week green, I think we may end up seeing more of a rally going into the end of the month than a sell-off. Again, it really can go either way, but I think that would be a good indicator because that would mean that the market has digested the CPI data, has come to terms with what they think is going to happen, and then we're gonna be going into earnings and Tesla has their earnings next week on the 20th. And so if we see some good run this week, we might see even more next week and could get a nice rally out of it. I'm not going to hold my breath. Still too much uncertainty going on with tomorrow's data. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to pay attention to that because if we do sell off a little bit, I'll buy more. But, you know, we've got Shanghai still closed. As of right now, looks like we have some easing going on with COVID going on over there. Sounds like Tesla is talking about potentially doing an in-house situation with their employees, just having their employees basically live in the factory so that they can continue producing cars. Whether this is actually gonna happen or not, I do not know, but you know, it's pretty serious over there in Shanghai. Does seem like it's easing, but it's like very slow. Really don't have a lot of information as to any idea as to when it's gonna open again. Only date we have right now is April 18th. So whether that happens or not, I don't know. But if we do get Shanghai opening up on the 18th and then earnings on the 20th, we can actually see a pretty darn good week next week in the stock. So my strategy is going to be the same as it has been. Still too much uncertainty. I'm not going to be diving in head first. I'm going to be looking for fudge buying opportunities to grab myself some more Tesla on the cheap. And if we end up going green and rallying, I'm just gonna cheer it and we'll celebrate it on here. And it also looks like the all-wheel drive standard range Model Y are the vehicles that are getting delivered out of Austin. They have the structural 4680 packs. Looks like the first deliveries went to employees. So we looks like it's going to have 279 miles of range. And, uh, and the price is going to be about $59,000. That's actually $2,000 more than my long range. But my long range price is back from November. So, you know, I'm going to look to see, because maybe if I get the option to go with the standard range, maybe I'll switch over to that so I can get the 4680. Still some things I need to determine on that one, seeing as my delivery now is not until January to April of next year. So I'll see, maybe I'll switch over to that. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Should I switch over to the standard range and go with that? Or should I stick with my long range? Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all of the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. Thank you so much. Have a great one.